bunny back in the box. Mama Mia, here we go again. Hiya, he's gonna come kill you. Mom and Dad, uh, not in a cage again. My, my, wish the boys would let you go. Welcome to the We Gage Cage podcast, where we watch every Nicolas Cage movie ever made, from worst to best in an effort to determine whether or not he is a good actor, because neither of us are familiar enough with his work. I'm your host, Brian Ambrosius, and with me, as always, the chocolate to my flowers, Brock Kircher. Ah! Psych! Psych! That's my wife! JK, LMIO. Uh-huh. And that's your wife! We got you good, you fuckers. <laughs> Language. This is going to be a clean podcast. No, it's this not. This is going to be a yes. cleanish podcast. There Unless is no we're... way. Not with not with the lines I have written down for this. Me and Emily right. will just be clean. You guys can yeah. be dirty. Yeah, guys. Hey, these are our wives. Uh, so Brian and Brock, we're still here. Um, the gal who read hey, the guys. intro, that's Leah, Hello. my wife. And allow me to introduce you to my beautiful, to... loving, angelic, valentinic. Uh, wife, Emily. Hi, God I'm Emily. Damn you, Brock! <laughs> yeah, what I already catch yet? enough flack for not like saying enough nice things about Leah, and all I did was say, hey, that's my wife, and you're like, oh, my beautiful, angelic. You and me the, allow me to introduce you to Brian's beautiful, angelic, <laughs> cherubic, just doting, loving, and effervescent wife, Leah. I think Brock loves me more than you do. Uh, Brock's right. just a walking th- thesaurus. Thesaurus. Yeah. So that hey, helps. It's yeah. Valentine's Day. So, uh, guys, Valentine's Day is right around the... It's right here. No, it's here. <laughs> um, oh, it's here. Brock, I don't know about you, but personally, I can't think of a better gift to give my lovely wife than to watch a Nicolas Cage film where all the parents in the world try to kill their children. Absolutely. Because the really greatest gift of all. It brought the couple closer together. Yeah. It's patricide, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we should be clear. I, I, don't know what you're, I don't know what you're talking about, man. This film had it all. This film had romance. It had <laughs> sex. It had passion. It was all there. We, we should be clear. We did not watch Dying of the Light. We, we switched it we up. Did, no, it wasn't Dying of the Light. We did not Dog watch eat Dog. Dog Eat Dog. Oh, Dog Eat Dog. Sorry. So last podcast, we said we were going to watch Dog Eat Dog. Uh, which was the next one up on our rankings. However, uh, Emily and I had the opportunity to do like a one night only screening of the newest Nick Cage film that just got released. Uh, we believe, um, Mom and Dad. So yeah, and Mom and Dad. So I wrote some notes here about this film where it, we should have watched it. Naturally. It was originally in our notes a six point six, so it would have been our fifty sixth film we watched. Oh my goodness. Like we talked about before, it's gotten a lot worse reviews. It's only a 5.6 now, so it would have been like our 28th to 30th if we would have used our rankings of now. Yeah, we would have caught up. But, what's that? We would have caught up. Oh yeah. But I do want to talk a little bit about Dog Eat Dog, because when I told Leah, kind of our, like we were going to have them on, and I told her we are going to watch a film called Dog Eat Dog, the first question she asked me was... Is it about dogs? Yeah, yeah. I love dogs. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know that movie, but I can almost guarantee you it's not about dogs. Uh, it's not about dogs. <laughs> well, I'm glad I, saw I didn't the watch it then. <laughs> and, so, and truly, okay, yep, keep going. No, I was just going to say, because then I asked you, I was just like, you know, I don't know what this movie's about. And you're like, oh, it's a gangster movie. So I go yeah. to Lee, I was like, okay, well, actually, it's not, it's not about dogs. I was like, but it's a gangster movie. And I was like, do you like gangster movies? And she goes, well, I like 8 Mile. Yeah, which uh, not that kind of gangster movie. A type of gangsters. <laughs> no. yeah, I said, a no. hip hop gangster movie. Yeah, I said yeah. no, a gangster movie, not a gangsta movie. Oh, gangsta, <laughs> gangster, same thing to me. The hard er. True. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got to think more like Goodfellas or uh, The Godfather. Sure, I've it's never more of like a mob mafia movie, but yeah, it's more. I don't know. I, I love gangster movies, so I would actually really have enjoyed watching Doggy Dog, but uh, instead we I watched Mom and Dad. I was personally afraid of Willem Dafoe. Yeah. Good luck is with that Is he in Doggy Dog? Yeah. yeah. So You're Willem Dafoe is in Doggy Dog. Oh, wait. You know Willem Dafoe? He's yeah. like a famous actor he's that like you a... also know about? Yeah. <sighs> Willem Dafoe, he's been in some things. I don't know if you would have seen any of his movies. Um, 
you know, Boondock Saints. Spider-Man. Uh, Spi- Spider-Man. Oh, but, I mean, who's ever seen a Spider-Man movie? It, it was you. released within the last ten years, so, like, who would have ever watched a Spider-Man movie? As Nicolas Cage would say, uh, fuck you. Not my Spider-Man. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but now we watched a different movie entirely, and it is not Dog Eat Dog. It is um, not Dog Eat Dog. No. But before we get into it, because we have our wives here... I was kind of thinking maybe we could just give the people a little history about how we met our significant other, maybe what our first impressions were of them, because we're married now, so it doesn't matter what we initially thought of them, but yeah, I don't know. Do you guys want to do that? It worked. Sure. Do you want to start? You want us to start? Yes. We met in a a very romantic way, right? Yes. Tinder. Tinder. (laughs) Tinder, baby. Swipe it. Well, see, I moved here. I moved to the cities, uh, Twin Cities, without knowing literally anyone. I knew, like, three people. So, like, I didn't know how else I was going to meet girls. Like, I'm not a big guy who goes out to bars by myself. So I was like, ah, let's try this Tinder app. And I guess it's more for hookups or anything. But uh, we met each other, and, like, we weren't just playing. Brian was trying to hook up. (laughs) Yeah, that's why he told me a month into dating that I was supposed to just be a hook up and hang up. Leah, no. <laughs> yeah. So because because Brian and I talked every day because, you know, we're best friends. Uh I was introduced to Leah as butt girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, because on Tinder she posted a picture of her butt with her Vikings underwear. I had they were like, nylon tights on underneath. Yeah, it was a tights. Halloween costume. She did not That's, have tights on yes, underneath. Yes, I did. She was trying to see what the boys would think about her butt, and it attracted me. Oh. I think she was <laughs> trying to so, see what the boys would think about her fan base. But we I we get like it. we talked on Tinder for like a month before we finally met, and at one point, Ooh. she like straight up stopped talking to me because I made a comment about how it's rude that Vikings make us watch them twice a year because they're shitty team. And apparently, you can't talk any shit about the Vikings, and that honestly made her stop talking to me for, like, a week. Well, I asked my dad if I should continue talking to you after that comment, and he said, no, you don't need a typical Packer fan like that in your life. Uh So I stopped talking to him. But then I kind of talked to her after a week. I was like, hey, I haven't talked to you in a while, whatever. And um, we decided to meet up and go to the Olive Garden, because, again, I don't know a lot of restaurants around here. Because you're a true romantic. Say what you know what. Say what you love. Olive you Garden. guys love Olive Garden. I love Olive yeah, Garden. It was your Valentine's are Day amazing. Thing. Yeah, and pe- people make fun of Olive Garden. I like Olive Garden. Speaking of Valentine's Day, Brian and I used to go to val- like Olive Garden as our mandate because yep. we never had Valentine's Day dates. Like he and it I would... used to just go together on Valentine's Day, fight off all the other reservations, and sneak our way in there. Just me and, and we you... get the girliest drinks possible. And, Did you, you know... used to dress up too? Oh yeah, we oh, wore absolutely. ties. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, so, but we went to Olive Garden, and um, first of all, she's like running 15 minutes late, so I'm starting to think I'm going to get stood up. Uh, but before I sat down, I told the hostess out there, I was like, "Hey, just so you know, like I'm waiting for a girl. Her name is Leah. My name is Brian. Like, if she shows up, make sure you know send her to my table." Classic love story. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened though? So I get there, and I think that the hostess must have switched out with a host. And I get there, and the host, he's like, how can I help you? I'm like, I'm here to meet a guy named Brian. He's waiting for me. And the host just, like, looks at me, and he starts laughing. He's like, there's no guy by the name of Brian here waiting for anybody. And so I call Brian, and I'm like, are you even here, or am I getting stood up? I was so like, she thought she was getting off. stood up, too. We thought we were getting stood up together. Uh, but then I came walking around the corner, and I saw her. I was like, oh, yeah, here I am. And uh, I guess the fir- the only thing... Well, the one main thing Leah remembers about that date is me singing, boom, clap, the sound of my heart, the beat goes on and on and on and on, and boom, clap, you make me feel good, oh. come on to me, come on to me. What Broadway musical is that from? <laughs> oh, God, shut up. What, what show tune is that from? Was, is that? But I don't know, I just sang that song, and okay, so first impression of my one. You guys, you guys, if Brian tries really hard, he could be a professional singer. You don't understand. All he needs is like a lesson and like the effort that it takes no, I to don't. become a professional singer. Okay, my first impression of Leah, though, I thought she was pretty, but, you know, and this is not good now that we're on the podcast, I, like the only flaw I saw is like, I thought she had a weird voice. I don't really remember why. I'm monotone. <laughs> like, Sorry. And she sounds oh, normal to me now, but 
Like, I just remember, like, even telling my family, I was like, guys, this, like, don't make fun of her voice when you first talk to her. It's, yeah, it's, but yet he, he texted me and asked me to send him a video of me talking to my dog so oh. he could show it to his family. Yeah. So that's what I did. And obviously, I talked to my dog in a completely different voice than how I talk to people. But let's uh, let's hear your first impressions of me. Oh God! What? My first impression of him is really offensive. Let's hear and it. And I was actually talking about this at work this past week, but I told my coworkers that after I left the date, and my best friend Emily called and asked me how it went, I said. Emily was a really nice guy, but the fact that he has a really high voice and he's saying to me, I honestly think that he might be gay and that I'm just going to be a cover up. Oh, <laughs> and no. then matters. Sorry. She it didn't uh, encourage her anymore when she came to my apartment for the first time because she said it was too clean. Yeah. Oh yeah. So mm. now he has a real beard instead of yeah, you this, being his beard. It's looking yeah. good, man. <laughs> oh yeah. It is. Like a I know. Mascot. I know you're not gay though. Okay. So, good. Good. Yeah. It worked out. So, yeah, that's our love story. Classic 21st century love story. (laughs) From there, why did both of you go on a second date? (laughs) He texted me three minutes after... Uh, like we drove uh, away. We left... That's a good Played it real cool, man. We left out the best part, though. What? About when we went to go leave, you asked me for a kiss, and I laughed at him and said, you're literally asking me if you can kiss me right now? And he goes, well, yeah, I want to be respectful. So I was like, yeah, you can kiss me. So he kisses me. I turn to walk away. He slaps my ass as I'm walking away. So I asked her for a kiss, and then I just slap her butt. I don't know. It worked. She married me. I mean, butt girl to the end. Butt girl yep, true and butt true. Butt girl to the end. Hey, it's all because of that picture. That's why. But yeah. anyway. That's our story. What, what happened with you guys? Uh, so we met in a much more traditional sense. Uh, okay, keep it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Romantic. So um, also online, but uh, my my story was a little different. So I was a consultant for work, which meant that I traveled uh, every week from where I was in Wisconsin, or no, sorry, in Phoenix at that time. Um, so I'd moved to Phoenix, but I had a contract in Memphis. And so I was flying back and forth Sunday through Thursday every week. Um, but I had my OK Keep It profile like active in Phoenix. So like while my Memphis contract was, you know, alive and kicking, Emily messaged me from back in Phoenix. So wait, were you living in Phoenix? Yeah. Oh, OK. This, I mean, the fun part is it was around Mardi Gras and like Ash Wednesday, Catholic Lent, and I had decided that I was going to take a break from online dating and focus on myself and give it up for Lent. Mm -hmm. So, Fat Tuesday... Wasn't he like the last message you sent off or something? I sent like three or four. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I'm sorry. The last couple of messages. Yeah, I won't say he was the only one, but... Yeah, I wasn't wasn't like the last hope. I was one of the last hopes. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, man, you gotta cast some lines. You never know which one's gonna bite. Didn't exactly. your message say, like, I am gonna just stop online dating, so this is my last attempt. If you wanna go on a date with me, you need to let me know now. Or something like, pretty much. Like I was yeah. like, yeah. I'm deleting this in an hour, but here's my phone number if you wanna reach out. Yeah. Nice! It, yeah, yeah. So, it worked. Yeah, so I'm in Memphis and I get this message and I'm like, all right, that's it's a good tactic. The one thing that I saw was that she'd read through my entire profile. No, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. over. Yeah. I don't know. Can you go back to MySpace days tell. and tell them about your MySpace uh, profile? My MySpace, my MySpace about me. Um, oh my god! I remember I copied and pasted it into a Word document, and I think it was three and a half pages long. I'm like, in no on MySpace. It's like a little tiny oh, yeah. column. It's oh, not yeah. a big ass Word document. It was so long. It was so long. And talking was, about yeah. first impressions, um, at that point, online dating, I used Tinder too. I would, and if, if I saved a guy's number, I would put it an emoji or something to remember exactly what they were about. Oh. And Brock's is a pencil because he wrote a lot, a movie clipboard because he talked about his love for movies, and a smiling, like laughing face because everything he wrote was funny. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so I was impressed by the fact that she read through the whole thing. And, like, was able to, like, sprinkle in little details throughout the profile. And then, yeah, she was very kind of, not 
aggressive, but assertive and like forceful <laughs> of like, yeah, if you want a shot at me, like here's my number. And Let's do it. Write me back. So I think I did like message her back that night because mm-hmm. I think it wasn't like an hour. She said like she was going to delete it the next day. So I wrote her back that night and then uh, we made plans to meet up. Like, I remember one of the you next first said like, want to grab coffee? And I was like, sure, where? And he goes, actually, I don't know what a coffee date is. Want to get dinner? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I was like, I, like coffee, coffee dates are over 15 minutes or something? Like Coffee, well, so have you ever had a coffee date? Have you ever actually We've gone... We've kind of got, like, coffee like a, or hot chocolate before, but, like, never, like, a, as a date, I really, I feel like I it's awkward with a stranger because... Yeah. At least when you're out on a dinner date, like, you have food to, like, keep you distracted. Other pay, people are yeah. around. Waiters yeah. coming by. I have gone on one, like, first date to coffee, and it was horrible. And there was no second date. Like, it was so <laughs> awkward. It was just the worst. So, when I initially pitched a coffee date i was like oh no that's that's a bad idea like let's just let's just do dinner so yeah so we got dinner and uh we ate at like a pizza place and then walked around the city for a little bit and stumbled upon like this girl who was just playing guitar at like a restaurant and so we sat down and had drinks there and then uh and then the very next weekend no before that we had our second date the next day Oh yeah, because that oh, was. Oh, see, you're a quick, you're a Dang. quick drama girl too. Because I was out of wanted. town. Because I was out of town so much, like I had to fit it all in within a span of like a day and a half. Every like every weekend, we would hang out, and then yeah. I would be gone throughout the week. Um, and I also walked her to her door that first night, and did I ask for a kiss? I, I think we just remember. kissed. Yeah. And they See, said, but then he did text right afterwards, butt, and I was like, oh, and then oh, so we nice. all we all watch The Bachelor along with oh. the Keepers, <laughs> yeah. And we have like a shout, shout out, out to the Keepers, group. shout out to the, she got the shout, shout out Keeps the she JKs, the JK. But so on Rachel's season of The Bachelorette, uh, oh, yeah. there was a childhood like fr- friend of her, mm, or she used to like crush. babysit him actually, yeah. and. um she kept thinking of him as a little kid, so finally he was like, I'm gonna kiss her. And he asked for a kiss, and she, like, completely emasculated him and was just like, are you serious? You're asking me for a kiss? Yeah. And uh, that made me feel bad because, like, I asked Leo for a kiss. I was like, I don't know. I just thought I was being nice. Yeah. I do feel like it's respectful because, yeah. like, if there – I have been out on a couple of dates where guys have tried to kiss me, and then I felt terrible because I pulled away – and yeah. I feel like it probably wouldn't have hurt their feelings as much if they would have just asked me and I just said, I'm just not comfortable right now. Yeah. So You're allowed to ask. Yeah. I still ask for a kiss because I'm a gentleman. <laughs> there you go. You still Every do time. it too. Can I kiss At you? night, you're like, can I get a kiss? Ew, you, you guys. Come on. PDA. That is gross. This is supposed hey. to be a clean podcast. One <laughs> other thing I want to bring up is I don't know what the hell I was thinking on our first episode where we were talking about movies we knew and like movies... Like, I said Leah liked one Nicolas Cage movie. I have no idea what movie it was. I don't know what was running through my head. The only thing I can think of is that I saw that Nick Cage was in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, maybe at one point. Movie. And she does love Fast Times at Ridgemont yeah. High. But you asked me later in the podcast, like, about Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and I was like, I, I don't know. But I just wanted to get that air clear because I asked her, and she's like, I don't like any Nicolas Cage movies. Yeah. <laughs> Not even National Treasure? I have not seen that one yet. There you oh, go. Oh, God, Every it's so team. good. So good. Everybody loves that, National that, Treasure. Everybody I see that he's also it. in The Family Man, and I think I'll yes. probably like that I don't movie. even know what that movie is. I think I'm it's disappointed like... he's not a snowman in The Family Man, so I don't yeah. want to see it. Emily thinks that he turns into a snowman. It is I not that movie. I think it's kind of like a... Is that like a chick flick? Because I said it was probably a chick it's, flick, and Brian doesn't think so. It's like a drama where, uh, as far as I know, the plot is basically that like he either does or doesn't have a family, and then it's like... Um, a wish makes it so that he either gains or loses his family and then realizes what it's like to like live on the other side of the fence kind of thing. Mm. Okay. Mm. I think she also thinks that he's like a playboy and then all of a sudden like he's like given yeah. a family to like learn what it's like to be a dad. <laughs> I think the she also I would want to watch is City of Angels. That one's oh yeah, intrigued me. I want to watch that one too. I heard that's a good you, one. You also said Con Air, Gone in sixty seconds, yeah. and it sounds like the Crudes. Well, we've seen the Crudes already. That yeah. is the one. Maybe that's the movie I was thinking of. Okay, I slept it. halfway through the Crudes because so we watched it like... at Brock's sister's house. So, you don't like so I don't Cage remember movie. it. 
I don't know. There's a few maybe she'll watch me with or watch with me. But uh, hey, uh, should we hop into mom and dad? Was there anything else you wanted to take care of? No. I will say, though, that like after watching Zandali with Emily and uh, Charlotte, and then after watching this movie with Emily, it's a lot better to watch a movie with somebody than it is Leah. watching it all by yourself. Leah Wouldn't was you agree? very... She was disturbed no. by this movie, man. I Literally, the intro to this movie, I looked at Brian and said, if this is how the movie is going to start, I don't think I can. Well, Leah, why don't you introduce it? What, what was the intro? The intro to the movie is a mom driving a van across a railroad track. And she, or the stereo kind of like tweaks out and makes like a buzzing noise. Like a static? Yeah, like a static. So the mom puts the van in park. And then she gets out of the van and she starts walking away. Well, as she's walking away, it like shows the back seat of the van and there's a car seat in there. So clearly there's a child in the car. All of a sudden, the mom's walking away from the van and here comes a train and smack. Like, who starts a movie out that way? Dude, I've, that is, and that's like five seconds in. This, I mean, yeah. that, it's the start. That's the yeah. start of the movie. We're getting yes. hit with a baby dying. So mm-hmm. right away, you should know what you're in for. Oh, <laughs> Um, Hi. so then the, there's like the credits and it's like old school credits kind of. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, the music of this movie couldn't figure out what vibe they wanted to go with. If they wanted yeah. to be like retro seventies or like EDM yeah. or is it, is it so the Stepford Wives rock? where they're like all robots or yes. something? It like, sounded I kind very of was getting like that vibe from it almost. It sounded yeah. like the Sims. You know yeah. how the Sims has kind music? Of. Yeah. I can see I that. Like that. Yeah, so it's it is like a very like black dark, com- dark comedy. So yeah. it's like it's it's meant to be like a very playful tone, even though like shit's going down. Did you guys find it funny? Were there parts you found funny? I we was that saying discussion. that yesterday. That there was the one part that I laughed at was the boyfriend. I yeah. mean, he was like, "Oh, being a divorce like my parents divorcing gave me a better chance at living." Yeah, that was the one time I laughed. I laughed a couple times. Okay, so, I think so I our laughed experience once. was a little different from yours, though. So, like I said, yeah. we, um, I was looking at the Alamo Draft House, the local, like one of the local theaters around here, and I saw that this movie was playing, and I was like, oh, sh-, like we got to go watch it. And so, and it was a one night only thing where they do like a film club, and this was the movie that they picked, like a book club. This was the one movie that they picked to show like this month or whatever. And so we show up, and it's all old people. Yeah. Like, I don't... And really? I'm, like, we Dude, this is the like theater. the girl next door that you went to. When you oh, went to yeah. the girl next door. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, those old people just walked out halfway through the movie. But this one, we walk in, and it's all old people. And I'm like, oh, we got to be in the wrong theater. And I was like, but no, this had, like, a picture of Nicolas Cage, like, on the monitor to show us, like, what, what theater we were in. And... And they, like, talked to us before the film, and they were like, yeah, you can get, like, a passport every time you come to, like, a, a film club screening. And and we sat next to, I'm going to call them, like, Peggy and June. <laughs> like, these two old ladies that did not shut up through the entire freaking movie. Yeah. Typical, sorry if we have any old people listeners, and I'm talking, like, geriatric, like, mo- like Peggy was 70 and June was 75 if they were a day. Yeah. And... But they knew what they were getting themselves into watching this film. They did. But, Everybody had picked yeah, it, and but they, they were, were they would jazzed. not shut up this entire film. So like we were in a theater full of people, and they were like shocked at that very first scene. And I think like Peggy said to June, like, "What? They they killed the baby or something like that." Like yeah, in that very opening scene. And I was just like, "Yeah, buckle up, Peggy. It's gonna get like no, it's gonna get See, worse." We did not know. I okay. All that I knew. Like, I don't know Nick Cage films. I knew that, like, the mom and dad tried to kill the kids. I didn't know why. I did not realize that every mom and dad was trying to kill every kid. And that's the difference. Like, if it's just Nick Cage and Selma Blair trying to kill their kids, that's one thing. But every parent, like, it, yeah. it, got, it gets I out of control. I was trying to Let's- figure out if it was just the community or the entire world. No, it was worldwide, it sounded like. Yeah. It was disturbing. So, it was, okay, there yeah. you go. So we'll, we'll try to break it down. So... Essentially, what I got out of it is that there is a static, like, message that comes over the airwaves, either, like, your radio or your television or whatever, and it's a static that will break through and, like, rewire any parent's brain and, like, essentially make them want to murder their own children. 
So it like reverses the natural parental instinct and makes them want to, instead of protect their family, it makes them want to murder their family. So that's the basic premise. Like that's here's where that's I struggle with this movie. Like ah, oh, hi, I've been going back and forth on what I'm going to answer for if Nick Cage is a good. Yeah, Rangers on here. Uh, it, <laughs> I didn't know. Like my problem with this movie is I don't know if I like the explanation for why all this happens. Like we don't get an explanation. It's we get some like Oz tries to say some. Let, okay, let's just let's go see. Yeah, let's get into Doctor Oz. Oz. Uh, you the can't cameo. just say Oz like he's a wizard. <laughs> let's Dr. get into Oz. it. So yeah, we get the credits, weird credits, and then it cuts to Nick Cage playing with a toy truck. That's our intro to Nick Cage. Yeah. But I don't know how good of notes you guys took. Like I don't know if you were planning your uh, notes, so I'll kind of take the lead a little bit, I guess. Yeah. This is my okay. notes. Okay. I so, have an order yeah, card kinda, and I ticked off the tropes as they came up. Yeah, so kind of interrupt me as we go along then if you want to. But yeah. we're introduced to Nick Cage playing with a toy truck with his how old is this kid? Is he they supposed mentioned to be four? That he's six years old. Six years okay, old. which he is my looks problem. Like an eight, like nine year old, and I kept asking Brian, I'm like, why is he not in school? That's what like, I said. What? Even if like, he's six, no why isn't he in school? I mean, to me, yeah. he's like a fucking eighteen year old, six year old. Right. So. Language, language. <laughs> he he literally looked like he could not be younger than like seven. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, so they're playing toy trucks at so, breakfast, and Carly is the daughter's name. Oh. She walks downstairs talking about meeting up with her boyfriend. I wrote it down as David. Apparently, his name is Damon. Damon. Sure. Damon. Sure. And Nick Cage. He's the star goes, of this movie. Nick Cage? No. No, Damon. Damon, Damon. The boyfriend. Oh, you like Damon? Like Damon. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Is but it Damien or Damon? Damon. D A M O N. Damon. But, like, Nick Cage has a very, like, he, he hates Damon for some reason. Like, she comes down talking about him, and he's like, You're not seeing that boy. He's a junior, and you're a sophomore. And in my head, we find out later Damon is black, and it's like, is there something going on there? Because, like, why is it that junior and sophomore, is, is that really the only problem? No, we no. found out, like, before we even met Nick Cage that he was black, because she was talking or, on the yeah, phone correct. with him. That's right. No, yeah. Yeah. Nick Cage so we... doesn't, want him, doesn't want her dating him because Nick Cage was like, I was a 17-year-old boy once. It's yes. her. Nick Cage was a perv and thinks that yes. everybody's a perv. Yeah. Correct. Because so it's part that, it's probably part racism and it's part Nick Cage probably got a note in his like character's like description that said, you don't like this guy. And he was like, okay, I know what to do with this. Oh, oh, I'm just going to really not like him. Yeah. So Nick Cage is upset because he thinks that Damon's going to try to bang her. But uh, Carly goes, well, it doesn't matter. I'm on the rag anyway. And Nick Cage plugs his ears in and is like, la, 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 la. I'm not listening. I'm not listening. Yeah. Like, yeah. Come on, dude. You're a 50-year-old yeah. man and you can't hear your daughter talk about her period. Real nope. man. It was a very weird breakfast scene. Yeah. Where then they're, yeah. the mom's just like, uh, Carly. Yeah. Uh. The whole yeah. time. Yep. Because, so, and then, yeah, okay, what? Uh, so, so yeah, so essentially, like, we get through this breakfast scene, it's it's shown that they have a maid, so they have a uh, Chinese maid who, like, a Chinese-American maid who has a very heavy accent, and she also has a daughter who is, like, working with her at this house, so... I have a problem with child labor. Yeah. That was so, messed up, too. So, for some reason... Again, the, the little why son, is the child not yep. in school, too? Aren't in <laughs> school. So, the little son and the, the, like, maid's daughter aren't in school. And I thought, like, maybe the son is, uh, like, sick. So, like, he's in his PJs. Maybe he was just sick that day. Like, it's never explained. It's never told to us. But, like, that's a plausible explanation. Leah, but, I mean, Leah had a problem with the maid anyway because she's like, well, isn't uh, Selma Blair, her character's name is Kendall. She's yeah. like, isn't Kendall a housewife anyway? Yes. Like, yeah. She doesn't even maid do have? anything. So, she was just sitting there drinking her coffee. Like, she could have been cleaning up the kitchen. Like, why have a maid? Yeah. So, and, and, and they have a maid even though, like, okay, so, yeah, this movie is very problematic. There's so many holes that we can poke in this. So, even though Nick Cage at one point, like, explains how he went from, like, a $164,000 job to just a $64,000 job, like... It was, like, 44000 45, yeah. 45, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, he can't support a family and a maid when Selma Blair is not working, and yeah. they have this, like, nice enough house, and... Like, what? Like, what is happening? And yeah. Nicolas Cage clearly doesn't like do anything at work, 
which we'll get then to. The a daughter later. goes to a private school too, so yeah. you got to pay a private like for that. Christian school. Yeah, yeah. Like there's a couple school. of little things that I think are kind of noteworthy here. Before we kind of move on more, in the same scene, like at one point, the son comes running up or oh, comes running yeah. on down the hall. And Nick Cage catches up and just fucking body slams this kid into the couch. Like, the it couch. was too hard. Yes. So it's setting the scene for like, oh, like is is Nick Cage like murderous? But no, he's just like playing around and giving him like a tickle, like a little tickle. Well, but then after he's done tickling him, the yeah. camera gets kind of pans out to Nick Cage's yep. face. Weird music comes through. Nick Cage has got a weird face, and then he goes. <laughs> or like laughs at him yeah, or something. Yeah. Him his like they Nick have Cage a laugh. staring contest so, or something. And then in the background, the maid goes, hey, uh, what's his name in here? Brent? Hey, Brent, I left you dinner in the fridge. And Nick Cage, just for no reason, goes, fuck you. Like yeah. under his breath. Yeah. Like what is, what's he telling his maid? All she he did was tell me she had dinner. Sure Cage is, is a total dickhead and he hates his maid. And for some reason, they really, really hate the maid's kid. I don't know yeah. what this maid's kid yeah. ever did to them, but both what? Selma Blair and Nick Cage hate. So, by the way, Selma Blair and Nick Cage are married. They're the mom and the dad, the titular yeah. mom and dad of this movie. But um, and they Brent. hate mm-hmm. the maid's kid. Like, just despise her and the fact that she's around. I don't know why. I didn't even don't worry. It's that. really she's weird. around for much longer. <laughs> so Spoiler. Nick Cage walks out to his car, getting ready to go to work, and there's a flashback, check mark for a trope, and it is Nick Cage getting, giving a, or get, motorboating a woman in a car doing donuts. Yeah, yes. I, that was shocking to me and inappropriate, and I didn't like it. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, that's the part you didn't it, like. It didn't With this sense. whole movie, the problem you have is Nick Cage motorboating a girl doing donuts that's in a parking umbrage. lot. That's, yeah, that's, problem. that's my Professor Umbridge. With this movie, oh yeah. my goodness. Um, that part's not even that bad. Well, yeah, but like the thing is, you didn't actually know whether. It was, it was a flashback because, like, at first you're like, okay, is this just, like, what takes place at their high school? Like, is this just their high school? Right. Um, like, I was almost like, is that the daughter doing that? But, like, I, yeah, it was yeah. weird. But it's pretty, like, obvious that, yes, this is, you know, supposed to be even pre Zandily Nick Cage. But they did a pretty good job with, like, you can figure it out that it's, like, old or, like, young Nick Cage. Because it yeah. does kind of look like a Zandily Nick Cage. It's got, like, the douchebag goatee. He's got like yeah, the like mullet, long Nick Cage mullet, right. like mullety kind of hair. Yeah. Okay, so now they the clearly had seen They're Zandley. setting up the pay the scene that he is having a crisis, a midlife crisis. He yes, hates his right. kids and wants to be young again. But if cool. you like, so you have a midlife crisis, and the first scene that pops in your head is you motorboat and some chick in your Thunderbird. He's not <laughs> intimate with his wife either. Like they're they're falling apart. So he's going back to days of like, oh, remember those titties in my face? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Okay, I mean, now they here's were the, pretty nice. So. Here's the thing. I was like, they, they were nice titties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to write flashback and like check it off, and then. I thought that he popped a pill at that point. Like, I thought no. maybe he was popping Viagra. Was he chewing a granola bar? Yes. Yeah. That, there okay. was a half a candy bar, like, on the passenger seat, and he just picks it up, oh. takes a bite, and tosses it in the back seat. I thought at that point that he had popped a pill, and I was like, holy, yes! But, you know what's funny? No. Is I tried to, like, I typed in mom and dad explanation just to see if, like, someone <laughs> out there could explain to me why the fuck they were all, like, crazy. And all I could really find were reviews. And uh, one of the reviews, my mom asked me, like, why we talk about Deadfall every episode. I was like, because that's like Pete Cage, man. And, and uh, yeah. this guy, he's talking about how there's no pill popping or anything in this movie, sadly. Uh, but he does reference, like, all these movies. Is like, we, we get Crazy Cage. You know, this is like Wicker Man Cage. This is like Vampire's Kiss. And he's like, or you could just go watch Deadfall because every moment is a Nick Cage moment yeah. in Deadfall. I was just like, yeah, yeah it is. Yes. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Same with that's me digressing to Deadfall. That was written where it was like, you know, it was his top ten. And I think Deadfall was only like number six. But. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Well, now there's a weird... Okay, so Nick Cage is driving to work. Now it cuts back to the six-year-old boy. I guess you're saying he's six? Yeah. I heard them say at some point six. Six. And he, this kid has a flashback. And I don't understand what the fuck happened here. Sorry, I know. language. I know. But he like has a cardboard box and there's like crows... Like Pecking at bird? something, a dead, at like yeah. a squirrel? dead squirrel or something. But it's not a, dead. Like a, we a, find out a later, dying it's moving animal. Yeah, a dying animal. And he decides and to save it and keep it in his dad's old firebird. Firebird, whatever. And then and feed it I Fruit Loops. Bird. And then it dies the next day, and it's horror. I guess I don't. No, understand. he was trying to feed it Fruit 
loops. Yes. And Nick Cage came in and was like, Oh, this smells! How well, am I going to get that out of here? He tries to feed it Fruit Loops, but it dies. And so the little boy, like, freaks out and runs away. And that's when Nick Cage, like, finds it and is like, Hey, what are you doing in here? And so, yeah, it's something where, like, the little boy is approaching the garage and, like, he has a flashback because of what happened in that garage. And so now he doesn't want to go in the garage. Yeah. Death is know. all around us. Leah said it felt like very Stranger Things, which I yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. gather that yeah. at this point. I was like, I don't know. I think we're going for a Gremlins turn here. Sure. Like, I, I didn't know if the box like, could represent like, anything. I yeah. felt like it was Stranger Things because whatever was in the box was making a really unique noise. So. Yeah. yeah. What's in the box? What's in the box? We never know. They never nope. show us. Yeah. That's it. Question. I think it's better that way. I don't want to see it. So there now Carly is at school. We, we're skipping like a scene with her and Selma, whatever. It doesn't matter. There's, their relationship strained. We cut to school, and Damon is taking his SAT, and outside the doors, you just see all these parents like staring at the kids, like salivating almost. Like they're just staring. And um, Why do none of them open the door? Yeah. I don't know. That's what weird. was like, preventing them? They're, they're standing there staring, but like, yeah, they're being very patient. Like, they clearly have bloodlust in their eyes, but, like, they're being very patient yeah. and orderly. They looked like zombies. Yes. Yeah. Like, waiting to just pray. Okay, let's just cut to so it. So that's where you don't know about, like, what like what this, I don't know, disease or whatever it is actually, like, does to people. You don't, you don't know whether it makes them, like, enraged or whether it, like, completely wipes out their mind or, or what, but it so, seems to yeah, affect so- everybody different. Yeah, they kind of show all, and like, then it goes to a classroom, and they're like, hey, send so-and-so to the office, send so-and-so to the office, and suddenly, all hell breaks loose. Mm -hmm. There are tons of parents lining the fence area to the school, and they're all trying to get in, but the police are like, back, telling them to stay back, whatever. There's a parent trying to climb the fence, getting fucking, like, I'm sorry, I'm dropping F-bombs here. Getting, like, torn down. He's bad. He's bad. (laughs) Getting torn down by the police, and all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. A kid breaks the line to go, like... Because his mom is Hold saying, like, mom. come on, just come on. And, like, the kid breaks the line. He breaks and the fence. this is where I put it feels zombie land-ish. She takes her keys yeah. and yeah. shoves it in him. And it's like, what the heck is happening right yep. now? Guys, it's crazy. All the parents are only going for their kids. Yeah. People are grabbing trash bags, putting them over the kids' heads, like, strangling yeah, so them, at one grabbing point, belts like a dad, and strangling like, yeah, them. grabs a trash bag and puts it over, like, his daughter's head. And, like, this all takes place on, like, the football field. So it's all just kids running across the field and then, like, the parents chasing them, tackling them down. Whatever they can get their hands on, they are, like, taking their kids out one by one. And, like, it's the half, like, crazy. oh, I want to go to my parent. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Oh, wait, my parent's trying to kill me. Again, because, like, the instinct mind, is, like, run. hey, like, my mom and dad will protect me, but this movie flips that on its head. Yeah. Like I said, it's like, almost like in Zombieland, you know, where the yes. zombies are, like, fast, they're coming yeah. after you. Like, it felt, it's, Number it's one intense. Role is cardio. My, I have yeah, no including idea. like this really fat dad who's just booking like the whole time, yeah. and I was cheering for him because I was just like, "There you go, dad." Um, I like from pretty much this moment on, my mouth was like agape while watching this movie. I was just like, <laughs> "What is happening?" I I mean, that's yeah. what I was here for. I was here for it, so I was I was all I was all about it. Yeah, the horror part I can deal with better. Oh yeah. no. no. Nothing with children dying or anything like that. I just can't, can't deal with yeah. that. <laughs> Damon goes home to his dad. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, his... Damon actually escapes this, like, SAT well, room. because no one's attacking early. him. Because, by the way, Damon's super smart, you guys. He finishes, like, ten minutes early. <gasps> Damon is just the star of this movie. He's the best character. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. <laughs> he just is good. Such no, good the best boy. character comes in later. You go, and you he gets home, and the you grandpa. find out that, like, his dad is a drunk. And as you find out later, his parents are divorced, so he's just got his dad. He's trying to take care of him, cleaning up and his he mess his while dad he's passed up. up yeah. Passed out. And then that he's really smart. He finished the SAT really fast. He wants to do better. And then his dad hears the static. But yeah, like as he uh, as he leaves the like SAT room, the parents do go in the door because he left it open mm-hmm. for him. Anyway, so yes. yeah, so he goes home, wakes his dad up, and dad hears the static on the TV because he had the TV on. And when he comes back to the couch, like dad is standing there, and dad. 
He, he, he breaks a bottle. He yeah, breaks yeah. like a vodka bottle, has a sharp shard, chases after Damon, cuts Damon's arm, but in the scuffle, like, falls he flips the dad over, and yeah. yeah, and he falls on the bottle himself in his neck, and he's killed. Yep. Damon killed him in self defense. Damon Correct. did not try to kill him, he tried yep. to get away. At yeah. this point. Doesn't know what's going on, though. Just thinks his dad tried to kill him, probably in like right. a drunken stupor, and then right. killed well, himself. He figures it out pretty quickly after this, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, he. When his dad I think he like, hears came like at a him, broadcast. he said, no, let's not do this again. Yeah. So his dad oh, yeah. obviously has hurt him in the past. Correct. And so for me at this point, I'm just like, so is there something just with like kids under 18 or something? Because in my head, I was like, are the... Like, are grandparents going to be going after their, like, adult children? Or, like, oh, yeah. because all we're seeing right now are the parents going after, like, littler kids. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's all we're being, like, shown. But, uh... That will be but, answered yeah. later so in this then, movie. like, way. there are, like, news broadcasts and Dr. Oz and stuff like that <laughs> that are, like, sprinkled in throughout this movie where it's basically, that's, that's right like, here, in fact. News broadcasts yeah. that are coming up. So I'm assuming that's what Damon, like, saw. That they're saying, like, no, this is actually widespread and... Like, it's all parents trying to kill all their kids. They even, like, get an interview with one of the dads who's like, you know, yeah, it's it's horrible what's happening, but, like, I had to do it. And so, like, what trying you see is Trying to pull up that, some like, crocodile tears for you, but just can't. Yeah, like, the parents don't have any remorse. To them, their brains are telling them, like, this just has to happen. Yeah. So, um, important notes here. Carly has a friend named Riley. Riley's mom is friends with Selma Blair. Mm -hmm. And Selma Blair and Riley's mom are at yoga. So they're not not seeing TV. Zumba. What is it? Zumba. Zumba. Not that it's really important, but they're shaking their butts at this teacher, and it's really weird. It's like really, like, effeminately gay, like, workout teacher who they both want to, like, sleep with. Yeah. The the point is that they haven't seen a TV. They haven't heard a radio. They're doing Zumba. And this is where... The Oz, Dr. Oz thing comes up, and he calls it savaging. And he says, think about pigs. Yep. Um, like, a mother will kill her baby piglet yep. if she feels like she can't feed that piglet. Yep. It's called savaging. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to, like, justify why this is happening. They're saying, like, all the parents are worried about their kids. Instead of having their kids go through this hardship, they're just going to kill them. Yeah. Hmm. This whole time, so... um. Now Carly goes to Riley's house, and Riley's mom is finally there, and Riley's mom kills Riley. Yeah. yeah. Riley and goes she, upstairs, her mom, like, kills her, strangles her. And while she's looking at Carly, she sees Carly. And Carly, she goes, Carly, like, finds this, like, yeah. scene taking place, yeah. yeah. And she just walks up, and she goes, hey, kiddo. That's what uh, Riley's mom says to Carly. Clearly, yeah. like, not trying to kill Carly, doesn't care about Carly, and yes. she just acts like it's normal. Like, hey, yeah, I killed my kid. They only but Carly care- doesn't know that yet. Correct. Right. They only want to care- kill their own kids, and again, <sighs> the way that this wires your brain, it to them, it's just something that has to happen. It's not malicious. It's not... It doesn't turn know. them into zombies. It just... They just get rewired to where they have to do this, and then they're fine. And then they're the this, same people. This next scene is by far the worst scene the in hospital. the movie. By the way, guys, we have yes. not talked about Nick Cage um, at all. We've only, The only snippet we've gotten of Nick Cage so far is like a few minutes at the start. No. And now all this other shit's going on with Carly and Riley and Damon. It was a lot of Damon. Selma Blair. I remember that going at first. Selma, yeah. I thought Selma Blair did a great job, by the way. Yeah. I actually thought she was a very convincing, like, kind of a build-up. Like, that's what one of the reviewers said, too. They're like, yeah, Selma Blair kind of blares up, whereas Nick Cage is just, like, freaking well, crazy the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I am. Um, I, I haven't seen Selma Blair in a long time. And I was like, hey, welcome back. Like, good for you. Oh, by okay. the way, Brian, oh, Selma Blair, she's she's an actress that people might know. Um, Scream 2. Legally Blonde. Yeah, she's been in things. <laughs> She's That's where shut I up, her from. guys. So Selma Blair has had a sister who's pregnant. She's second film in this movie. Yeah, guys. Selma Blair's sister has been pregnant. They're expecting. They're due, and she's she texts her. Hey, right, I'm, she's I'm like mom. my water. Broke. She's a mom and mom and dad. Selma Blair. Shut up, man. I'm trying to get to this bad part. I know. And I'm trying to protect I, Leah's virginic ears. Over this well, I've part. already witnessed it with my eyes. Do you? Would, would someone else like to take over? Because uh, I'm sure you guys know this part. Mm. Oh no, we we both covered our Selma's, ears. Selma's our sister eyes, water broke. Like, she's at the hospital. She's giving birth to a baby, and at this point, I'm just like, no, I know. no, you no, know it's coming. no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Selma's telling her like, 
This is going to be the best moment of your life. Just wait till you hold the baby. It's instant love. It's so perfect. And I'm like, oh my God, what the hell is going to happen right now? While she's pushing, there's a TV in the room. It's not Problem. that much. It's yeah. not a TV. It is like the fetal heart rate monitor. Oh, that was it? Would not like the yes. EKG yes. scanner. Guys, yeah. I had a lo- I had to write a lot of notes for this part, so I, I missed that. I guess. So Emma and I both work in like a medical field in a hospital, and I will tell you, those aren't hooked up to any sort of like television feed no. or anything that would like receive it only complicates a signal. What's going on? IT security on? assessments would not allow any sort of outside feed to, <laughs> to yeah. impact. You it. can't interfere yeah. with a heart. All that does is like read from the heart rate. So band. maybe it's not something with TVs or radios. Maybe know. it's just any electronics. Sure. Maybe. But it, guys, it was dumb. she she has the baby. They put it on her chest, and she starts squeezing yeah. the life out of this baby. I literally got sick. Selma Blair and the oh. doctors are screaming, "Give us the baby! Give us the baby!" And she has like an insatiable, like bloodlust, and she wants. Okay, to Okay, guys. Baby. Selma Blair gets it. Wait. What? I'm just gonna take tone of the room. Who wants to see the baby die? No. Nobody. Nobody no wants one. to see the baby die. No. It's terrible. I think this is Let's the appropriate fast time. Forward. Oh, the baby wait. doesn't die. Ah, Selma okay. Blair protects it. But here's the, here's the most we fucked up. Have just I'm sorry. Never, I have to say the F word here. Here is the most fucked up part. anybody whether the baby died or not. Here is the worst part. There, they have like, what is that newborn room called? Where nursery, all the newborns nursery. go. The nursery. The nursery. They have a nursery. They put the baby in there. It's a pretty famous term. What? Yeah, it's a pretty I'm famous term. He he Most asked people me would last know it. What that room is called? <laughs> God, I'm trying to get this part out. Nobody it's knows so what bad. that. Nobody knows what a nursery is, Brian. It's so bad because all the parents are looking at the glass, staring at these babies, and you're just like, "Oh my God!" It's all the all dads these... too. It's none of the moms. It's all the dads. Yeah. All the moms it's... just give birth. Yeah. The moms are That's, indisposed. That scene like had my skin crawling though. Yeah. I was just like, "No." Yeah. No. Not the babies. They were no. protecting the babies. I felt good about that. So they were yeah. protecting the babies. I mean, barely, but like the nurses. It's only a matter of time before the they go in there and kill them. So I don't know if anybody like could tell, but Brian, Leah, Emily, and myself, we do not have children yet. <laughs> no. So, but uh, still, like, I don't want to see something like that. That's yeah. not okay. So we're super <laughs> qualified experts to be talking about like the parental bond between parent and child and. And all that. And uh, if there was one movie to get us prepared and ready for having children, Mm -hmm. it was certainly this movie and certainly that scene. Perfect Valentine's Day present. Exactly. Yeah. It was terrible. Uh, Guys, there was a quick cut to Nick Cage in this part. Was he watching porn at his office? Oh, he was absolutely watching porn. Watching porn. I said that to Leah, and she's like, no, it wasn't. How is that like? So he fell asleep. I thought maybe he was dreaming about having sex or something. No, he fell asleep while having, uh, like, Pornhub open on his. Is which which Peggy and June next to me even like had like a knowing like ah like and I was like Peggy and June know that it's Pornhub because like they recognize like the homepage for Pornhub. I've never seen that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, the point is he was asleep. Sure. So you're like oh okay. So he also isn't getting affected yet. But now so it cuts back to Carly after that traumatic Wait, baby no, scene. No, you're 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 burying the lead here. What? So he's at his office. And he wakes up to Pornhub or whatever, and like I think his wife is trying to reach him. But yep. so while he wakes up, he turns a photograph around, which are of his two kids. So much like in Dying of the Light, how he turned yep. the photo of Bill Clinton around before he was gonna kill himself, and I said, "Hey, that's kind of like what you do like before you masturbate." It, yep. There you go. So he <laughs> he did turns, it. So this is the trope now where, like, before he's going to do the dirty, he likes to turn photos around because he doesn't like to get caught from the photographs. So he must, like, believe that photographs have, like, some sort of mystical power. And that's just a Nick Cage thing. I don't think that's anything of his No, character. that's a he movie just, thing, man. What about the four-year-old virgin? He just brings when it. When he's finally yeah, going to no. masturbate to Space Nuts, he, like, yep. turns all of them around and lights all yep. the candles. Yep, but he just, I, I think Nick Cage believes that, like, photographs have magical powers. And he doesn't right. want them to see him whack off. It's dumb. After one of the worst scenes maybe I've watched in a long time. Maybe going to whack with the gun in Dying of the Light. Just yeah, maybe. Like wax off sure. with it. Like Stick it in there. To his oh, temple nice. or something. Anyway. Uh, so after the worst scene ever that I've watched in a long time, really made me really sad. Guys, as I get older, I, I am more emotional. I know you call me a robot, but like, that really, really made me sad. The baby scene? 
Yeah, dude. Okay. It, I'm so sad. I don't know. Are it you was well so far-fetched here, to me that it didn't affect do you, me. Do you want to talk about it? What do you mean it's far-fetched? They're trying to kill their kids. Yeah. Why that's is that far-fetched? Gonna, that's not going to happen. I hope not. But yet titties bum, bum, bum. in a car or like that's, that's the more realistic than this happening. Yeah, that was more upsetting to Emily than the, <laughs> than the infanticide. Um, the thing is, though, during that scene, everybody in the theater was freaking the heck yeah. out. So all I of, hated it. So Peggy, June, everybody was just like, don't you fucking do it. Don't like, you do it. Like That's what I was say saying. I was like, no, no, oh, don't you do it. No, that get that baby away. Like, get uh-uh. that baby away. Like, <laughs> guys, don't like... Don't like just pleading with the director to like. I actually don't. really don't remember what happens. How does it cut to? Hold on. By the way, it you cuts just to the Nick Cage. Yes, the well, director of this is the same director as a uh, Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance. Yeah. So Crank. Brian Taylor is half of the Neville Dean and Taylor duo that is behind the Crank movies and and Ghost Rider and Gamer and all of those films. Okay, so the way it cuts back to what's going on is that it follows Carly trying to go back to save her brother Josh. And uh, the maid is mopping up, and her mop is red. Oh, yeah. So what we failed to mention is that, like, as the little brother was, like, by the garage and having his little flashback, we, like, it does cut away from the maid, and the static goes on her little TV in the kitchen, and her daughter's, like, helping her out and she's tenderizing and she has chicken a, or something yeah like a meat she has a meat tenderizer. tenderizer yeah and we do hear like a scream of a little girl so i did not catch that uh-huh. after the movie how, you how didn't you because it, it's really like, quick it's a it was quick loud. yeah but it's quick and I, maybe i was writing a note you know i knew you guys didn't have a good note so i took really yeah. good notes but i once i was reading the plot that's where i really like they said it again i was like oh wait i missed that part but yeah. yeah but anyway so it cuts so back to her she's got a red mop carly she's meets mopping up, up the, the boyfriend room. And the boyfriend says, yeah, let's go get your little brother. Right. At some point. Um, Nick Cage walks in now. We finally get Nick Cage back yeah. uh, with Damon. And uh, he thinks, again, that Damon's just trying to bang Carly. So it's the middle of the day. He's Carly trying to bang Carly. Carly is upstairs with, like, trying to get the little brother out from under the bed, which we see is his favorite hiding place, which it's like, hey, dipshit, everybody knows you hide under the bed. Quit hiding under the bed. Pick a new hiding place. So, and Clearly Nick Cage, it's not he, working. L- his explanation for all this was that, like, he was young not that long. I was young not that long ago, by the way. And I was like, dude, you're like 55. Yeah. You're 40 years away from where he's at. Um, and then in his explanation to try to explain how he knows what was going on, Leah, would you like to read what he says here? He's explaining, like, why, like what voice, kids Leah. have been exposed to. I feel like you're in really your, skipping in your, to... No, we're not. He's, well, did you he's say that Nick Cage gets around. home to see... Damon yeah. in his house. Yeah. yeah. Are you listening? Yes. No. You're petting Ranger? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, petting my dog. So right here. here. So he's talking uh, about why kids yeah. are corrupt. He says kids are corrupt because... Um, Best Nick because Cage voice. You gotta do your Nick Cage voice. The things you kids have seen on the internet. Mouth to dildo. Dildo to ass. Ass to ass. Hi, Brent. Anal beads. His yeah. name is Brent, by the way. Yeah. Just as a reminder. He's like, hi, Brent. Anal beads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was weird. That was that, that was a fantastic no, impression. Like, Way better than Brian's ever done. Mouth to dildo, dildo to ass, ass to ass. Hi, Brent. Anal beads. <laughs> I like didn't understand where this was coming from. No. Hey, that, that's hey, that's what the internet does to you guys. Yeah, and ass to ass. That is. We're all corrupt, I guess. That is Nick Cage's character this entire time. Like he he just says things and does things that are like completely inappropriate. Completely, like, out of left field the entire time. Why can't I think of a word that when you do what you're mad about? What? What? (laughs) Like, hypocritical? Yes, he's hypocritical. He was just sitting, sleeping, watching Pornhub. That's Leah. Thank you. You know what I was looking for. I don't know, Leah. She got it. I know I would never be the one to get it. That's too big of a word. Um, I think uh, Brian's mom is going to be pretty upset with you. No, it's not just the, that he, it's his also character. Leo. Is like, I don't understand half the words Brock says. Yeah, I I told my coworker Connor, shout out to Connor for the second time, uh, um, the, the con man, that I was I gonna like to need to a thesaurus in order to keep up with Brock and Emily because they both use <laughs> words that I never know what they mean. Yeah. Brock's the pencil. Okay, I'm the thesaurus. Guys, action is really ramping up now. Yeah, Josh comes downstairs. Yeah, hi, Dad. Oh well, that's all he says. Well, so. Yeah, so... Okay. That's it. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, because after the well, dildo ass thing... I'm trying to put it in place. I'm sorry. I don't have notes, but I'm trying no, to put it in place. After the dildo ass thing, Josh just kind of comes... Like, it, it doesn't escalate from there. Damon's fine. But Josh comes downstairs. Hi, Dad. That's all he says. Yeah, and then but all Carly suddenly, is trying to sneak Josh, like, out past the dad. Like, that's the whole point. No. Is that... Technically, but Josh kind of just gets well, in front of her. But technically, Nick Cage does not want to kill Damon. Like he's pissed at Damon, but he doesn't want to kill him. But but Carly knows that. Like yeah, Dad wants to kill me and Josh. Yeah, yeah. So but so yeah, he he somehow gets in front of Carly, says hi, Dad. Like he doesn't know the kid's only six. He sees his dad. He's excited. He's a and Nick Cage all suddenly shit. it's like a twitch in his eye. He's just like oh shit. And now he does attack Damon because Damon's trying to stop him from attacking Josh. And he. Throws Damon into a bookshelf. What? Yep. Did you have something nope. you want to say? No, I'm just. Well, she no. wants to. She wants to cut in. Go ahead, say it. <laughs> he does his floppy, wavy hand that apparently is just so oh, strong yeah. to knock people out. Where he shakes it's like it. Mankind. It's like a jazz hand. It's like spirit fingers. Yes. No, it's like mankind. When mankind would put the sock on there and get ready to do Mr. Socko. Mr. Socko. He would hold it up above his head, like shake it. Like and he then, like ah! he like looks at his hand before he does it too. Yes, yes so, he so does. His body. <laughs> Nick Cage body slams him into the bookshelf, gets him down the floor, and what Emily's talking about is now Damon's on the floor. Nick Cage gets on top of him, and he holds gives him up, the shakes old it, it just high fucking yeah. He doesn't <laughs> say it, yeah. but that move but it's that he's done in like four different movies yeah. is gonna be referred but, to as the high F and yeah. We, we haven't talked about why he did it. Like he has Damon on the floor, holds his hand up, and just slams his head into the floor. Super hard. I thought he was dead. I know. So Poor same Damon. Thing he did when he went to go slam the sun onto the couch, though. He did the same thing. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Um. Oh, you're pulling. Hey, what's happening here? Oh, God. That's okay. We're not <laughs> talking. Pulling on my headphones. This is difficult. It is difficult. Headphones. <laughs> it's difficult with four people. Okay. So now that Damon's knocked out, Nick Cage only has eyes Ask for the headphone. Josh headphone and Carl. Headphone to ass. Headphone to headphone. Ew. <laughs> Hi, Brian. <laughs> and Still don't. As, Josh, as Josh and Carly are running away, Nick Cage trips cartoonishly on the toy truck he was playing with earlier. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, whoa, whoa. At which point, like, I think it even, like, cuts back or at some point, like, there is a scene where he says, like, I can't even walk to the front door without Bra- tripping over one of Josh's toys. That's the next scene. Okay. Because uh, now we're doing the flashback three weeks oh, ago. Oh, sorry. Pardon uh, no, that's fine. They lock well, themselves oh, in yeah, the basement. Oh, yeah, because Carly and Josh go to the basement, and they see, like, carnage and a sledgehammer. Yes. So now it cuts back. So they're locked in the basement. That's where they're protected, I guess. Whatever. Whatever. Um, yep. And now it cuts back to three weeks ago. Yeah, because like you said, there's, like, wood and stuff all over the ground. Yeah. And we cut back three weeks, and Nick Cage is putting together something. What's going on in that basement? And while he's doing it, he's dancing stupidly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, we find out it's a pool table. So, Nick Cage sure. is putting together a pool table, which is, like, pretty innocent of an act to do. Like, there's no reason for it to be this weird thing, but this movie's going to make it weird. It's only weird unless you make it weird. And so, uh, at some point, Selma comes down and sees him doing this and is basically just confused and says, what's going on? Did you buy this? She's very pre- reasonable. Pre Christmas. Well, yeah. Like I what? Agree. What is because happening? Because it's Christmas. I guess you bought this like using money that we don't have. You know, can't redirect it from the maid that you guys hired. But uh, hmm. that's neither here nor there. And and is asking him why he's going through this midlife crisis and and turning this basement into a man cave. Which he gets really upset about. Man cave! Man cave! Maybe it's just a family room! It's like, well, yeah, mm-hmm. that's also known as a man cave. As a man who's sitting in his man cave right now, every, every guy mm-hmm. needs... This is not big enough for a pool table. But um, There's a little so, less hairy version of me behind you. I see yeah. my, my cardboard board self. Hi, yeah. hi cardboard Brian. Hey, pose. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, so he... So then he gets mad and says, Fine, you don't want a pool table? We won't have a pool table. And this is where we're treated to the Nick Cage rendition of the Hokey Pokey, for whatever really reason. Really weird. Yeah. You put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, as he takes a sledgehammer and dismantles the pool table that he just spent, you know, a week or whatever building. 
and Brock. and crafty character. Come on, but the whole time it's that. Come on, give me your Nick Cage voice of it. He's yeah. trying. Well, the whole time it's that he's trying to like get it level, and he keeps rolling a, a pool ball, and it keeps not being level. So it's a it's a labor of love. But yeah, so as he's going, it's you put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, you put your right foot in, you put your left foot out, and just going. Like, you do the hokey pokey and you jerk it <laughs> And he's just going for it. Yeah. Which, I thought, here's the thing. I thought that was going to come up later. Like, I thought it was going to come up later when he was trying to kill Josh and Carly. Which I thought would have been a great callback. No. Never shows up again. Just okay. the hokey pokey. There, I did write down a few lines from this scene. So after the hokey pokey thing... Um, but Selma's just like, what the hell is going on, Nick? Like, talk to me. And he goes on about this yeah. where he says, like, I used to make 160000 now I make 40000 And he's like, I'm not a fan of machine sales. I was going to grab the world by the balls and squeeze, boy! This is a, yeah, this is a Nick Cage monologue for the ages where he's just so depressed that he's a dad. Yeah. Instead and, of um, instead of Nick Cage, he wanted to be Nick Cage when he grew up, <laughs> and now he wanted to live in castles. He wanted a dinosaur skull, and he's got to be a dad to this little shithead six year old who puts dead things in his Firebird, and Carly, who's like smoking weed and and Too trying to have sex with her boyfriend, and on the rag. So Nick and Nick Cage is just describing his deterioration about like how he used to be like a, a, a young buck or whatever, yeah. and he says like I would have never dreamed I would be a flat on his ass, fat, a bald, cottage cheese fucking ass, blue bonnet, buttered waistline yeah. with hair coming out my ears, my nose. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> well, my my bon- my blue bonnet, butter waistline, like. This is improv. He is improv it and didn't know where to go. Here's, yeah. here's what I want to say. I love that part, though. Nick Cage did not look good in this movie. He's, no, he looks that's what I'm old. he's looking he rough. Old. He is looking yeah. so rough. From, from like, Dying in the Light to even, like, I mean, Humanity Bureau is probably his most recent before this one, I would guess. And I don't know, like, the exact timelines of when they filmed. But, like, Humanity Bureau, he looked pretty rough. But he still yeah. looked kind of thin. He had the shoe polish and the hair. And then it gets to this one, and it's like, oh, oh, Dude, you let yourself you got a go. Cottage cheese you let yourself ass, go. Blue bonnet, buttered waistline. Blue yeah. bonnet, butter waistline. Which I was just like, like, where's that going? <laughs> See, yeah, exactly. That, that's the thing. Maybe I should re say it again. He goes like, bald, cottage cheese, fucking ass, blue bonnet, b- b- buttered. Like he's looking for the words because yeah. he's improving what he's saying. Yeah. yeah. And Selma's just sitting there crying. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just was weird. Yeah, and it's just just this weird, like, hey, you know, neither of us want to be in this life, but uh, we're going to make it work for the kids, I guess. Not even. Cuts back to Selma driving back. She's still... She hasn't heard static or anything yet, but as she's driving, there's a mom oh, running with the way, her kid in the store. By the way, they took the kid away from Selma. So Selma got the, the infant, and then like the hospital was like, hey, we're going to take the yeah. infant away from you. And she mm-hmm. really like fights against it, but they're like, no, this is just, it, it's hospital policy. Like We're no. going to do it. And she did. She heard the same static that her sister that right was giving after birth this. heard, too. Yeah. Well, oh, she maybe was it was right room. then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah. Um, but anyway, as she's driving back to her house, there's a mom running with her baby in the stroller. Oh, yeah. And the mom just, like, chucks the stroller in front of Selma's car to try to hit the baby. Like, yeah. what the hell? It doesn't make any and sense. She could have killed the no. baby before that. And then. as Selma's driving, I will, like, the radio does say, like, there is a broadcast. So the thing is, there's all these broadcasts and all these news reports that are saying, like, this is what's going on. And then they keep, like, cutting out for the static. Like, the static is invading, like, different reports. And so as she's driving, one of the reports says, Hey, don't go to your kids. I know that's your instinct. Fight it. Do not go to your kids, no matter what. Do not go to your kids because you're going to want to kill them. And so she listens to that, and at first you're thinking, like, Oh, is she going to listen? No. There are several points with Selma where it looks like she's going to beat it, where she's not going to do it. Like, there's several points I'm just like, wait, is she done? Did she, like, snap out of it? She's a good mom. She never does. No. You think she's going to be a good mom? Yeah. So now it cuts back. She does get to the house, Mm -hmm. and she sees Nick Cage pass out. He kind of comes to in a Nick Cagean way. 
And um, I wanna, she's trying to plead. Oh, that was where he yeah, was passed on. out there, lying on the ground, trope wise. Oh, because he taco tripped meat? on a, yeah. I noticed. Do you have taco meat there? It's yeah. all white. You yeah. can barely tell. It's. I was comparing oh. it to the tofu taco. She or, said tofu meat, <laughs> and then I was like, Yeah. Did you say like fish? Or like a shredded chicken yeah, taco. Like, yeah. or like fish taco. Fish yeah. taco meat. That's oh. what it was out, but you could barely tell because it's all white. Yeah. Because he's 54, 55, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Dude, we saw okay. We saw Keanu Reeves in the Super Bowl commercial. Correct, where he, he, looks, he looks good. Where he's going on that like motorcycle and he's doing like the stunt. He looks yeah. great. Does not look fifty four. Does not look Nick Cageian. Does not no. look the same age as Nick Cage. Uh, so Selma is trying to plead with the kids. They're in the basement. They've locked it. She said, "Guys, come on, open the door. It's your mom, whatever." And after a split second, Nick Cage goes, "Your motherfucking mother said, open this door." You motherfuckers! You're going to open this motherfucking door! Like, slamming on it. Motherfucking door! Yeah. Guess what he was doing? He was scraping at the door. Oh. At the door. Scraping at the door. <laughs> and, and, but immediately after doing all that pounding and yelling, he, like, starts sobbing, but he has, like, his fingers in his mouth. Yes. <laughs> he yeah. just wants to kill them He's so bad. Going, he is going, like... Full cage. So, I mean, that's my cagiest moment. That's my cagiest moment. I have it written down. This is it. I I originally wrote hokey pokey, but then once door scene came up, I had to write down door scene because that's that's it. It's him just yeah, just going completely like you motherfucker, motherfucker. I person all the time it seems Brock how do you write down where he like gets his inflections because so what I did this time was because I remembered with you motherfuckers like he he says it like you motherfuckers so I wrote it starting down and going up and like I wrote a couple of U's in there so I knew he emphasized the fuckers I usually how do you just, write it down so I you know just capitalize like what I'm doing like uh yeah mm. so like like when the last movie or whatever the dying of the light when he's like or like I underline so like get someone else to get your goddamn lecture I resign I resign Whatever. so you yeah. underline it yeah I underline or I capitalize like and and like I said it's we've said it this whole time every time he delivers the line it's like he's pooping and trying to just get it out and that last word is like when 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 it finally plops there's that last <laughs> word Gross. it's that full release that he gets all right, I so think Ken, if you were to ask him Ken, to do it again, he would not be able to. <laughs> no, he can't. Oh, I bet it's just as good. He can't recreate that magic. <laughs> oh, it's just as good. Um, so Kendall decides to get the sawzall. And Nick Cage is like, why would you get the sawzall? Like, that's not going to cut through it. She's like, it's a sawzall. Oh, yeah, it he's, saws all. He's so <laughs> condescending, too. laugh. Yeah. <laughs> See, that was a funny part. That was funny. That, yeah. I mean, I think Selma... And Selma Blair, right? Yeah, yeah. I think she's kind of funny. Actually. She's good in this movie. She's yeah. actually probably my favorite character. Yeah, she's not bad. She's a she's a fine actor. You know she's who's not? Guy. Nick Cage. Nick Cage. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we'll talk about that when we're talking about our ratings. But uh, yeah. Nick Cage is like, screw your saws off. I'm going to get my gun, and uh, yes. the gun is gone. Yeah. Yep. And while Nick Cage notices that, there's a gunshot from downstairs because Josh. Stole the gun before he went down there. He he told Carly like, "I need my backpack." And you're yes. like, "What the hell do you need your backpack for?" Exactly. Yeah. Kid's smart. He is not bad for Josh. Yeah. So Josh, well, because apparently he never goes to freaking school, <laughs> like because yeah. he's too young. I don't know. But then he's also really so got this, this thing of like, "Don't hurt mom and dad. Don't yeah. kill mom and dad." So what you They're learn is that okay. basically Josh has just been like, uh, yeah. Running around, getting into some stuff that he shouldn't get into, and at one point, yeah, he like. And Kendall didn't know about the gun, so yeah. she's like, "Oh, this is another part of your midlife crisis. You really went all in." Yeah, he's like, "It was locked." She goes, "What Nick was the?" Comes down. Well, yeah. Sees- so Kendall says, "Like, what was the combination?" Josh's birthday. Josh's birthday. So, <laughs> so that's where Josh gets to type in the code, and then Josh. We're treated to a good Josh scene where he's in this underwear with the gun, like pointing at himself in the mirror, being like, "Hey." You. Yeah. Shut up. His whitey tighties. Shut your mouth. Yeah. You just shut up. And I'm like, he looked like a little Marky Mark Wahlberg. It was cute. Yeah. But uh, after she got shot, Nick Cage runs down, and the first thing he just says is like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. And like, he does this weird, like, high step as he's talking to her. Like, oh. what are we going to do? He's like walking like a, yeah. a, 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 a flamingo or something. Like, yeah, really like weird. Yeah, and it was so yeah. funny. 
And so then, like, yeah, so so their, like, rage at trying to kill their kids is getting in the way of, like, any pain that they feel, I guess? I don't know. And so Not really, because then they go upstairs yeah, to clear it out. They treat it. And they just freaking pour alcohol on it. Yep. Yeah, that was gross. Yeah. Without Nick taking the bullet out. That the makes no sense. Out, and he, she's like, nope. No she clearly does not trust Nick Cage being no. her husband because I wouldn't want him to pull a bullet out of my arm either. No. no. Okay, but here's a weird part for Nick Cage. Again, just Nick Cage, he he takes lines and he he flips it, man. Like she they they try to wrap up her arm. And as he's wrapping it, he's kind of like counting to yeah. like help calm her. He's like, "One, two, three, five, six. Yeah. yeah. A five, what are you counting six. like that for? <laughs> And Selma's like glaring at him, like I just want to kill you right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, she ain't. Um, she ain't have So it. now they get back down there, and they decide they're gonna gas the kids out. They they move the stove, they plug in the gas line to a hose so that they can run it down into the basement. Selma's so the window idea. in the basement. Not Nick's. Selma. No. Yeah. Nick this is no this part's kind of funny she's too a because then yeah, this part's kind of funny too because Nick Cage oh, is like, hey, yeah. proud of you, babe. <laughs> yep. He's like, I yeah. love She's you. Like, yeah. Yeah, love you, babe. This is fun. <laughs> Thanks, honey. And then, and then Nick. I, if I remember correctly, because I didn't write great notes, um, Nick is like, we're going to wait until they start coughing, and then we're going to hear them pass out. And then he, like, laughs hysterically, because yep. he's like, and then they're going to be passed out, and we're going to go down and kill them. <laughs> he's so giddy that this plan is going to work. And then so- that's when Selma tells him that, she found the maid's daughter in the recycling bin, oh, yeah. and he continues to laugh. Yeah, he's like, yeah. "Oh, that's where she was." Yeah, yeah. That like that adds up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but oh, so they made the maid go home. By the way, the maid just goes oh, yeah. home. Oh yeah, did. Yeah, the maid is like more pissed that like she had to go home because she's like everybody acted crazy today. So yeah, they uh, they they take this garden hose, run it to a window in the basement, but then they put sand over the window so that the gas can't seep out. She uses duct tape. To like seal mm-hmm. the cracks of the door, but in my where head, the, I'm just like, where dude, the there's gunshots were the bullet holes. Yeah, but in my head, I was like, there's too many other cracks. Like, I, I don't Absolutely. know if this would actually work. No, there's no way. I don't think so. Okay, and I don't know why the Tyson. kids didn't escape through that window. That's what I'm saying yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, Neil deGrasse. They were stuck down there, like, go up that window. Yeah. Poking holes in in the science of okay. this movie. Check off matches. Earlier in the movie, we saw someone playing with matches to light a stove. Uh, what? Are you I just getting this? Notice I didn't notice that. I no. didn't even notice Someone it either. Someone lit a stove with the match because they have a gas stove, as we're seeing now. Uh, Carly has the matches. She realizes, like, she starts to see the gas, realizes her and Josh are getting sick. She's like, oh, they're gassing us out. So she goes and puts, like, some matches along with, like, the, the what is that? Stri- what is yeah. the, striker? the striker? With the striker. Sure. She cuts a striker off, puts some matches on top of it so that on the bottom of the door, so that when they move the door, it would light the matches. Yeah, she is Calvin McCarth- MacArthur. I don't know. She's home alone level genius here. Yeah. It's It's fantastic. Like, the kind of smarts that Carly has. I mean, not quite on yeah. the level of her boyfriend, but... Because she pretends to start coughing. Yes. She pretends to cough and pass out. Meanwhile, her and Josh climb up a vent. But Nick Cage hears them coughing. He's like, ah, Yeah, they climb into an air duct in their house. Which I'm like, how do they climb straight up? We don't... We, yeah. yeah. Why isn't the gas going into that air duct? Yeah, we don't know. Air duct. Yeah. We, no, nobody knows. But they okay. climb up the duct. Nick Cage heard him coughing, so he opens the door... And boom, there's a huge boom. explosion. He gets knocked back. Yeah, which yeah. was great. I thought he was dead again. Wow. Or not, maybe not this isn't again. Well, I keep thinking he's dead and he... Spoiler alert, he doesn't die in this movie. I thought God he was damn, he gets close. Sure uh, <laughs> they might still die in the open-ended. end. Open-ended. Yeah. They might. We'll, we'll see. Um, so now Selma wakes up and uh, she chases Carly into the bedroom. Uh, somehow, so Carly closed the bedroom door. Somehow Selma can bust through that door, but she can't break through the basement door. Well, what? yeah, so the thing is, you, you missed a great line where Did I? Nick is grabbing the Sawzall, like, too. No, that's later. Okay, sorry. Well, Nick does use the Sawzall like eventually on the door. Is. Oh, because, like, uh, Kendall is yeah. trying to use the Sawzall on the door, and it's just, like, <laughs> like, like, bouncing on the door, like, can't get through it. And, like, eventually they, they do, like, make some headway in the door, and I think that's when she gets oh, shot is when she's Sawzalling the door. Yeah. I think yeah. it works. Yeah. 
But anyway, so Selma brought, busts through the bedroom door, and uh, who should come to the rescue but Damon? Damon. Selma, he's alive. At yeah. one point, Selma like walks over him, and it almost looks like he moves a little bit. So did it? Yeah. Everybody was in the theater was even like, I thought he was awake, or at least Peggy was like, I thought. Well, he, he is awake. awake. Because he and Carly lock Selma into the closet. Yep. And then all of a sudden they start having a moment. This is where he's like, oh, I never thought having divorced parents would save me. Well, yeah, his, I think his exact line was, you know, I never thought when my parents got divorced that it would double my chances of surviving this. Yeah. And it was a good, clever line. Good, good for him. But and he's lose. been great. He's been fantastic this movie. He's and a good boy. And nobody has good. cared about him. Yeah. It's, even Carly was like, oh, whoops. Every time he gets knocked out, Carly's just like, okay. Dead guess. Bye. This kid, man. But the, the he, shit he goes through. He should just get away. He does not have to keep coming back to save Carly. No yeah, piece of like, ass is worth you. that. You didn't care about me the first time. I'm out. Okay, so but then in the moment of like, oh, my parents divorced, whatever, they kind of lose track of what the hell they're supposed to be doing, keeping Selma in the closet. She opens it a crack, has a wire hanger, and stabs Damon in the cheek oh, like which, a fish. Like it was gross. That was gross. I that's not like that. That's not, not realistic. Gross. That can't happen. <laughs> that was more realistic. Oh. I did that as a little girl. You stabbed yourself through the cheek with a hanger. Yeah. Through the cheek. Really? Uh, not all the way through, but a couple layers. Well, in. yeah. This was like a fish. Like just like yeah. On, uh, on purpose. Uh, I was like five more. years old. I'm playing with a hanger while we were camping, and we'd just been fishing. So I think I was making fun of fish or something. I don't know. Good. Makes sense. Hey, it makes Learn, sense to me. Learn something new about you every day? Yeah. Um, so now they're so chasing... exciting. Selma busts out and she's chasing Damon and Carly again and Damon, like a rag doll, gets tossed over the railing to the first floor and it looks painful. Oh, yeah. It he's looks dead, right? dead again he hits, and nobody cares. He hits the second landing like of the steps. He hits the railing and then like folds onto the floor. Poor yeah. Damon. I mean, they did pause there for like a split second, and they all stared at him. And then Salma looks back at her meat grater and is like, "All right, let's get back to it." Meat yeah. tenderizer, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Nick Cage wakes up, sees a saza. Saza means it. Saws all. Saws all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Saws yeah. all. Saws all. it. Saws all. Yep. Yeah, and <laughs> so now he's now he's, after him now with he's like burnt to a, like like pretty much like burnt like ashen face. Yeah. He's like been exploded and like all kind of bloodyish and and yeah, and he grabs a sawzall and so now he's walking like a like a pure zombie. This next scene is like in the running for. I still don't know if I picked on my Pete Pete Cage, but I love this scene. Um, the parents, mom and dad. Mm-hmm. They kind of corner Carly and Josh in the kitchen. And yep. Carly is like pleading with them, Mom, Dad, I love you. Please don't do this. The camera cuts to Selma and she just goes, shh. And then it cuts to Nick Cage and he's got Fruit Loops on his face. Yes. Yeah. And he just goes, Saws. Oh. Yes. <laughs> he's got Fruit Loops on his face. And I'm just like, Nick Cage. Like, you know, before that scene, he's like, hold on, let me go get some Fruit Loops and put yep. these Fruit Loops on my face. Yeah, because yeah. he got exploded. And like Earlier. his face is just all man, Saws, oh. like he's too bloodthirsty that he can't even say a sentence right now. Correct. Nope. Uh, doorbell rings. Oh yeah, so yeah, so as they're cornering them, and it's like the moment of peak tension. The doorbell rings to break them out of like their 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 mania. And my question um, earlier. And so Chekhov's Chekhov's doorbell um, was that they did mention how Carly couldn't go over to her boyfriend's house because. Grandma and Grandpa were coming over that night. So Guys, my question earlier... doorbell. Grandma and Grandpa. If the old people would still kill their adult kids, we see Grandma and Grandpa there, and for a second, they're just standing there. Yeah. Uh, Nick Cage answers the door, but then Grandma hey. shoots him in the spa- face with the pepper spray, and we're like, oh, it is on! It this is part's kind of funny. And this is yeah. Nick Cage's parents. Mm-hmm. And then Grandpa just starts stabbing them. Yep. Yeah, and so <laughs> you, you learn earlier that Grandpa likes to share stories of when he was in Vietnam and he stuck a, uh, like, Viet Cong with his own pig sticker or something like that. So, like, his own knife. And so Grandpa knows how to handle a knife. Yeah. So so now we have Nick Cage chasing Josh yes. around the house. Yes. Grandpa chasing, chasing Nick. Yes. It's like a huge, like... And Grandma Nick- technically trying to get in on the fun as well. 
And then Selma somehow kicks into like, oh, I need to protect my husband. Yes. Right. So this is again, why. I was just like, is Selma coming out of it? Yeah. So Selma, yeah. So Selma like is torn between trying to kill Carly and trying to like prevent Grandma from killing Nick Cage. Mm-hmm. So but while there's while this chase is going on between the three men, Nick Cage is barking like a dog. Yes. As he's chasing. Woo, 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 yes. Woo. Because that's what he does. That's like his default. That's what he falls into. I think he's barked like a dog in another movie, too. And um, so Josh hides in the Thunderbird, and now it cuts back to this really weird scene between Nick Cage and Josh. And I think this is where you were talking, like, the way he, like, talks to the kid is really weird. Oh, absolutely. Because this kid is five, six. Five or six. Yeah. He's yes. five or six in this flashback, and what... Like, go ahead. So Josh uh, hides, in the, hides in the Firebird, and, and it cuts to a scene where... They are sitting outside, and it must be, like, post the bird, right? So it's, like, Nick Cage trying to talk to his son, like, hey, I'm not mad at you. We all learn from our mistakes kind of thing. And the thing that distracted me and brought me out of the scene was that Josh is eating a bomb pop, and that freaking bomb pop keeps shrinking and growing and shrinking and growing and more red and less red and more white and less white, and blue is gone and blue is there. And it's cutting back and forth throughout the scene, and that bomb pop is... Fucking magical because it just language. I, I I know that it is just editing and that it's no, but they should editing, not have gotten a bomb pop where no, it's very obvious the red, white, and blue. Like if they would have got a push pop or something, yes, popsicle. Like, a, yeah, just a, a, a great pop. popsicle or something. I don't know. And so and and the fact that Josh is going to town on it doesn't help. <laughs> but Nick Cage is just he's he's got. Hold on, wait. Can yeah, I tell you, you one, probably one took thing better that took notes. Me well, one thing that took me out of it, so he's talking about, like, he's talking about his experience with the girl he was motorboating. Yes. Talking about the Thunderbird, and that's what he crashed it. He's like, you know, I made a mistake with the Thunderbird. I had this girl. Yeah. Yes, I had girls before your mom, and I crashed it, and my dad sold it to me, but I had to pay him back. Because that was Grandpa's every... car. Yeah. yeah. It, but what's one weird thing that happened while he's talking is he has a beer crack. And at one point, he just, like, licks the beer. And I was just like, what is going on? Like, it's like that. a Barty Crouch in, in Harry Potter where he's, like, got the tongue. And I was yeah. just like, it's kind of a weird thing. But um, well, still, he's he starts, really gross how he's talking about these women yeah, with his, his six-year-old son. son. Yeah, talking about to... being a pussy magnet. I'm fairly. And, and his kid just goes, he, his kid even says, Dad. That's he's like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. And then he says, like. You know, I get it. All right, it was a mistake, but I'll kill you if you touch it again. Yeah, yeah. that that. But if you touch it again, I will kill you. And I do want to say earlier though, to again, Nick Cage is his character is just such a bad person <laughs> that earlier when he was in the basement with Selma Blair, he was talking about how he misses like how he was in in the olden days, and he was like, you know, I used to what like what phrase did he use? He's like, oh. I used to like be a natural born killer like I used to slay 9 out of 10 girls that I went after Mm -hmm. and it was like again your wife like maybe she knows this and maybe that's like why she was attracted to you she doesn't need to hear about how you used to like have such a great track record just banging out women sounds like her dad every time you talk to her dad about his past he's just like Oh, I was a chick magnet. I had this long, flowing hair, and the girls could not resist. And he's like bald now. <laughs> he's like, oh, my hair, my mane. They could not resist it. Yeah, he's like, I used to Shout unbutton my shirts all the way down. He would get his taco then... meat out. Ooh, yeah. yeah. It's just like I don't need to be here in that. No. I'm his daughter. It's gross. So after that really weird scene between uh, Nick and Josh, yeah, it which, cuts back. which only like proves how much he loves the car over his kids. Yeah, that's it. Cuts yeah. back. I don't Josh? think he wanted to be a dad. This all right. This is gonna be kind of hard <laughs> really? to describe what happens here. Josh yeah. is like in the Thunderbird. Nick Cage kind of goes it. through the window. He starts. It. Yeah, he starts it for no reason. Like it looks like. Well, he's gonna try to escape, but Nick Cage comes in through the passenger window, tries to grab him. While he's trying to grab him, the, the, the grandpa is like stabbing his legs. Yeah. Yeah. What? He he bra- he smashes like an axe through the sunroof. The grandpa. Or a sledgehammer through the sunroof. No, Nick Cage smashes like a sledgehammer or something or an oh, axe yeah. through the sunroof and then goes in through the passenger side. Yeah, and so... Uh, then the, this is so, where, yeah, the so details he, don't matter. Yeah. Let's just cut to okay, the end. So he grabs Josh. <laughs> grandpa yeah. starts stabbing him. Then it's Josh better. rolls out and Nick Cage is in the car getting stabbed. Nick Cage well, hold on. presses the gas hold, 
And it goes back and forth and back and forth. I'm sorry, what? Wait, what? 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 There's one thing. What Grandpa does is funny. Well, no, but what happens is also, so before the car, like, starts rolling, it cuts back inside, and Selma and the Grandma are going at it, and uh, the Grandma, like, just whacks Selma with a meat tenderizer, and then she goes after... Carly. Or no, oh wait, sorry. Selma hits the grandma with the meat tenderizer and then Selma goes after Carly. So they're like, oh, yes. Selma's not out of it. She was just trying to plead for Nick. Um, but now the grandma, like I thought she was dead. She's not dead. Okay. She wakes up and she like steps outside just as the car is now rolling out. Yeah. Correct. So, yeah. So, that, so that, that's all I want to say. Point, the grandma, because this is weird. Yeah, so the car, so it's cutting back and forth between grandma and grandpa like scenes. And so the car is going back and forth in the garage and eventually like I don't know if Josh opens the door or if it just busts through the door cuz it's it busts through. real quick. So it busts through the door in reverse. Nick Cage and is driving. Nick Cage is driving and the grandpa is on the hood. Mm-hmm. And so the car, grandma's in the yard. Grandma's in the yard and then she runs out into the like the street. The car reverses and pivots like a like a nice pivot and grandpa's head is in between the front bumper or like the side bumper and another car and it gets smashed. It it and explodes grandma. like a cantaloupe. Yeah. And grandma gets just sideswiped and it takes her out too. But this is the weird part. Like then the camera like as she's flying over the hood, it cuts to inside the car through the sunroof and you see her weird face. Oh yeah. Like it's CGI and it's really weird like it's scary yeah. looking of her just grinning at Nick Cage who's yeah. driving the car. Uh but she dead. Yeah. Yeah, so she's dead. Grandma and grandpa, grandpa die. Grandpa gets gets killed as well. It's obvious assumingly, that they were too old. Assumingly Nick um Passes out. Nick gets knocked out yet again, because that's so what Selma, he does best. The grandparents are dead. Mm-hmm. Selma is in the kitchen, knocked out. No, from, no. Selma is Selma going after. Um, Selma Carly. is going after Carly in the yard again, oh. and she does hit her with the meat tenderizer. So like, she gets her. Yep. And as but she's Damon, rounding, Damon. Yes. Damon survives again. Yes. Damon comes back once, <laughs> oh. once more with a tire iron. For some something. reason, is still trying to help this family that don't deserve it at all. He should just run. He should just run away. But he hit Selma with a shovel. So now we have the grandparents are dead. Nick and Selma are passed out. And all the kids are fine for the most part. Yeah. For the most part. Except, huh, cuts. except Josh. God damn. Who's traumatized because he never got to eat that popsicle. <laughs> cuts to the basement. Selma and Nick Cage are tied up back to back around a pole. Um, Nick kind of comes to, sees the kids, and is like, "Buddy, yeah, hey," and um, then tries to get out, but he can't because they're tied up pretty good. Yeah, it was a good tie. Good tie. Um, Thank I you bet Damon was really well. about a boy scout yeah. too. And so they're arguing about whether like they should get let out, and the kids are. Staring at him, and I don't have I wrote any. this part down. Okay. I wrote this part down. So then, yeah, so they're talking a little bit, but finally it gets to the point where they're realizing, like, they're going to stay tied up, and Josh goes, I love you, Dad. <laughs> I love you, Mom. And Selma goes, like, oh, we love you, too. Nick Cage goes, but sometimes we, sometimes we just want to. And then credits. Oh. And it's end. Were there any, end. were there any spoiler, like, uh, uh, after credit scenes, I waited. There were not because okay. I wanted to see what he said. I uh, presume that one of the taglines in the movie posters is sometimes you, they just want to kill you. You wanted to see <laughs> what he said. <laughs> you didn't. You couldn't. I couldn't want to believe. Away. So that's sure, where man, with I don't the like tropes. Not knowing. I want to believe that the kids killed their parents and then they sure. were just like they're not going to come out of it. We got to survive. And this is also my theory on the full movie is that it's actually just survival of the fittest who was going to either. Like, survive their parents, or vice versa, and make, like, it was somebody trying to clear out upon the time. Or parents were going to kill their weak-ass babies, no, and I then disagree. reign supreme. Oh, <laughs> oh Emily didn't like that. that. If, it, if it was survival of the fittest, then they would have not just gone after their own kids, they would have gone after all the kids. I just thought it was messed up. <laughs> <laughs> it was a messed up guys. movie. Like, like, I, like I told you guys last night, and I told Brian... I told a couple of my friends, whoever wrote this movie 
Needs to get put in a loony bin. Yeah, that's Brian Taylor. Because, like, who writes a movie about parents killing their own kids? Uh, like, that's just now okay. Guys, Nick Cage has said this was his favorite movie to make in probably the last ten years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe it. Oh. So he enjoyed it. Yeah. Ugh. Sure, he got to I cage out. It. He got to cage out. What? People, you know, I, I remember reading about this movie, and it said that Nick Cage is at his unleashed, his most unleashed that you've seen him. And... I'm gonna say this. I, I know. Uh, uh, let's take the temperature of the room. Brian, did you enjoy this film? That's where I'm struggling. Like the more I start to think about it, I was like, you know, it's a really interesting idea. It's a, it's new. I want to take that as like, a no. Leah, did you enjoy this film? Absolutely not. Emily, did you enjoy this film? No. I enjoyed this film. Ew. I, I can tell. You're Brock, smiling. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. I enjoyed this film. Wait. No, no, I'm going to cut you off. Because what I want to say is that I needed this film. After watching the the most recent films that we've had from him. So, I mean, the most recent in terms of getting made. The Humanity Bureau. Arsenal. Uh, Dying like, of the Light. Dying of the Light. And then this one. Like, this was, this was his best film that he's put out in the last couple of years at least and it is a chance for him to actually at least step up and give a give a care because he has not given a care he's shown up he's gotten his paycheck he's tried to put another dinosaur skull into his castle and and he has not even tried to act at all so this time okay. he actually showed up and tried to act he didn't do a good job at it but he tried and that made what? all the difference for me Let's do it. Let's let's talk about our Pete Cage. I have comments I want to make on it too when we determine if he's a good actor or not. But let's talk about Pete Cage first. Leah, I know you kind of have one ready, uh, right? I think I changed mine. What's your favorite Ooh. moment then? My Pete Cage moment is when Nick Cage is trying to break into his Thunderbird at the end. And the grandpa's like poking him in the butt or stabbing him. And he is letting out the most weirdest scream oh! I've ever oh! heard. <laughs> I there actually cracked up at that one moment. <laughs> uh, Emily, what's your peak cage? When he's scraping at the door. Scraping Not that he actually said that, but he was pretty close. Your motherfucking mother should open the door. Hey, motherfuckers! You're going to open this motherfucking door! Well, if we're gonna use this like a fantasy football draft, and they just took my two best players, um, I'm I'm gonna take the hokey pokey. I'll take the hokey pokey. You are. Yeah, I'll take it off the board. Oh yeah, you put your right foot in. You take your right foot out. You do the hokey pokey, and you fucking work it all out. And you do the hokey pokey, and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Uh, uh. I okay. Well, now there's two that I really like. I, the I, I thought for sure this was the one Leah talked about yesterday with the mouth to dildo, dildo yeah. ass, ass, ass. Hi, Brent. Anal beads. That's a good one. <laughs> but now, the world you kids are living in, the things you've seen on the internet, mouth to dildo, dildo to ass, ass to ass. Hi, Brent. Anal beads. That's a great one, but I think my actual one is where he's doing the improv in the basement with the pool table. He's like, I got his flat ass, fat, bald, cottage cheese fucking ass, blue bonnet, butter waistline. Like, there you go. Just because you can tell, like, he doesn't... That, that's probably my PK okay. moment, but the dildo the ass is pretty yeah. high. That guy in a million years could never have pictured this tired motherfucker he turned out to be. Flat on his ass, fat, bald, cottage cheese fucking ass, blue bonnet, butter waistline with hair coming out of my ears, my nose. I also really liked when he, yeah, like, just when he, I guess that does factor in to the uh, scene with the boyfriend is, sorry, I'm blanking it now. (laughs) Yeah, I'm Damon. Re- yes, with Damon. When they're in the kitchen. When they're in the kitchen, that that factors in like the whole dildo ass to ass scene. Yep. But even just when he walks up on him and he is so mad and he's just like, "What are you doing here, you motherfucker?" And it's almost Deadfall where it's just like, "You cocksucking motherfucking dog fucking motherfucking dirty little rat." 
Like, why are you here? It was just... If I could say anything about this movie is that there are a lot of good cage... Mo- like the critics are saying, yeah. a lot of good cage moments. And it does... In this film, it makes more sense given what's happening. Yes. Uh, but let's let's take let's go around the room and determine if he's a good actor. Uh, uh, Lee, we, well, the, the, tropes, the tropes. Oh, the tropes. The tropes. Yeah. Okay. The tropes. So he did not wear sunglasses, unfortunately. So maybe that that might need to get off the list. I don't know. We were really sunglass he- heavy in the first couples, but he hasn't worn sunglasses in a while. Wait for it. Okay. Um, okay. So he, <laughs> yeah, because she knows National Treasure. Yeah. Um, oh God. There's flashbacks. Because you Turn have on. to. Um, he yells and repeats, naturally. He has a laugh. Um, he has a fuck, and specifically a fuck you yep. in this one. He doesn't hey, pop hey, pills. Wait, quick question. Quick question. Have we had a movie where he hasn't had hysterical laughing or yelling yet? No. 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 I think ev- even in Left Behind, he had some... Did he have... He had yelling. La- laughing? Uh, yelling, he did. Laughing, I don't. Oh yeah, he did. Think. Because like when the stewardess came in and, and like with uh Michael. Oh, he might have right. laughed when he did his stupid joke about the carry on. Oh, I bet. He might have. <laughs> he did a stupid laugh. In his intro coming up the stage, oh, yeah. coming up he the escalator. The laugh. He's laughing he stupidly. Laugh. There you go. Okay, so good. I think every single movie he's had a stupid like that is Nick Cage to a T. Yeah. yeah. Is the laughing and the yelling. Uh, he didn't rot agony pills this time, guys. There was just no excuse to in this one. I'm sorry. Um, no, there wasn't. The taco meat was out. He he did a high fish meat. high f and ya, and it's always a one punch knockout. It's always a With one a flat punch. hand somehow, dude. Yeah, his he's signature fight again. move is that like look at my hand, jazz hand, and then yeah, and beating up kids, beating up kids and women. Oh, he wow. loves beating up kids and beating, women. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna give it a. Give it a half a point and say he might have died. It's a Schrodinger's cat. He might have died. He might have died in this film. Yeah, it's real. He probably did. Um, let's determine if he's a good actor or not. Leah, do you want to start it again? Um, okay, I'm indifferent because this is the only movie I've really seen him in, so I don't know if well, he's wait, a good actor But what did you think? Not. Did you like him? Did you not like him? No, I thought that he was a dick the whole time. He, okay, so that's think a no. He carried this like this film. Do you think no. he made this film and that it would have been better with somebody else? Or I think Selma Blair carried the film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so. that's a good answer, Emily. Um, he did what he does. So that's you a no. So that's that? no. I don't think he's a good. He. You, you think this is another castle period? This is just Cage. His life. I. She, I don't think the, I don't consider this a castle period. By the way, this is not no. this is not in that same like the castle period movies are really boring. Right. That's why they're bad. But this one, they're, has they're a paycheck, a good and this plot. one is like a passion project compared to a paycheck. Um, but, Emily was very against us doing this particular podcast. I, I will say that like she didn't understand why we chose Nick Cage because yeah. she doesn't get Nick Cage and she doesn't know why Nick Cage. I don't know I'm why telling anybody you, after, wants or needs this, but this is what he does. I didn't know why either, but it's true. Like, I don't think we're going to... We might, like, maybe in Con Air, maybe in Adaptation. Like, maybe he's not over the top. He won an Oscar for, like, Moonlight or something. No, he won an, maybe no, the, he won an Oscar. He So, this man has an Oscar. I don't know if we've ever actually mentioned that. You've, you mentioned that several times. He <laughs> has an Oscar. In, in that tone, in that tone, you go, this man has an Oscar. This it's for Adaptation, has isn't won, it? No, he, uh, no, he was nominated for, for Adaptation, but he did it for, I believe, Leaving Las Vegas. Uh-huh. Oh, actually, that might be it. So I don't know if once we get to those films, are we going to stop? Like, we started at the bottom for a reason yeah. because we knew it would be the shitty movies. Yeah. But, okay, here, I, I want you to go last. I'm going to tell you, like, I am so close to almost giving him my first yes. Here's Whoa. why. I think I'm going to rate this movie a six. Whoa. And I told you, I told you, if I rate a movie a six out of ten, like, that's that's almost a yes. Now, here's what Rotten Tomatoes does. If someone rates it, like, a two and a half out of four, that's about a 60%. They take the general view of the review and kind of use that. Like, was it mostly positive or was it mostly negative? That's how it's going to be determined if it's fresh or rotten. I think I would give the film a 6 out of 10, but as Nick Cage pertains, I'm going to give him a rotten because he is too over the top again. Like, I get... I get it, but like Selma Blair does it right. She builds up yes. to it. She she, she doesn't go it. over the top. Mm. Nick Cage, I, I'm going to say it's a no again. And it's not just against Nick Cage, but it's like... If someone else were in this movie, I think it probably could have been better. Yeah. yeah. 
I yeah. agree. So I'm gonna say a no. You know who I would have liked to see in this movie? Married to Selma Blair and like doing the same role? Just randomly. Oh shit, I'm gonna drop an actor's name who you don't oh, know. Gosh. Timothy Oliphant. I know Timothy Oliphant, but he's from the girl next door. Oh, not a, nobody's seen a girl next door. I'll say I don't know Timothy Oliphant. And he's from uh what's what that is, what's that what Western is, movie justified? that he's in? Or Western show. Justified. Justified, yep. I like Timothy Oliphant. He's was, the main he's the bad guy I think, in the girl next door. Like the one that comes and beats up the yes. young guy. Yeah. Timothy Oliphant would have been fantastic in this movie. Oh, I that love guy? Timothy Oliphant. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. I just thought he's a doppelganger to Riggins. Uh, yeah. So, Brock, anyway. I give it a no. I, we're, I'm at 0 for 9 now, no. but I, I just can't give it to him. I'm, I'm probably going to go through this entire experience never agreeing that Nicolas Cage is a good actor. Sorry. So you're a no. I, even when you say that the movie's good and give it a 6... I can say that the movie's good. I'm never going to use your same metric and say that Nicolas Cage is a good actor. That's the beauty of this. I said I gave it a six, yeah. but like mm. he didn't do good enough to make me give him a We'll yes. have our divide. Um, we'll have our disagreements. It's weird, but it's almost like you and I disagree on things and don't don't have the same opinions. So we're both 0 for 9 now. And this is, like I said, guys, this should have been like, what did I say, our 58th movie, 56th movie or something? Like this was high up there. Yeah. Critics love this movie. Yeah. The users, you can even when you it. look on Rotten Tomatoes, you the the critics have it like a seventy percent. Uh, the the audience is at like a forty percent. So it's a very strong disconnect between critics and users. I don't. I, I kind like I said. As of, the more I think about, it, I'm just like okay, it was a cool concept and different, but nope. Who he's a no-go. was your favorite I character? Get it. I you were get saying it. it was somebody else. Actually, my favorite, my favorite character was Selma Blair. I thought she did really good. I thought you were going to say the maid. I thought the grandpa, maybe. <laughs> the grandpa was kind of funny, too. I know. I liked him. Um, so, Brock. We like the We're boyfriend. done. We're, we're going we're gonna to get to um, Dog Eat Dog now. That's a guarantee, right? Yeah. That's the next film on the docket. It's, uh, it's um, not about dogs, but it does have no. beloved, famous film actor Willem Dafoe. Yeah, we know him. Yep. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to our wives. Thank you for being here. Yes. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Hey, can Thanks I kiss you? Thanks for having us. Not on the podcast. Oh. Can I, come on, let's kiss real close to the mic. Come on. Kiss, Are you, you, I don't do can't PDA. Can't kiss on the podcast. <laughs> no. You gotta make it loud she enough. She says no. Come on. Hey, get up here. Respectful. No. Be respectful. That's see, his that's beard wrong. tickles me now. Yeah. That's gross. Um, uncomfortable. Just getting there. Well, ladies, thanks for being our first guest. Yes. Um, yeah. Everybody else, ladies, would you like to sign us out here? Bye. No. <laughs> Good luck with your balls, your lady balls. There you go. Yeah. Good luck with all the balls. Good luck with your balls. All the balls. Good luck with them. Yeah. Happy V-Day. Bye. Bye. Bye.